This is Huawei's new Mate Pad Edge. Let's swipe with four fingers. It's also a Harmony OS computer. Okay, King Me, I'm here to bring you an unboxing of Huawei's latest MatePad Edge, a very special two-in-one Harmony OS PC tablet. Let's take a look. The whole box is black. We've prepared a knife for it to peel off the protective film with one hand, giving you an immersive experience. But as you can see, the tablet's shape is very different. First, there's a ring of holes inside. If you look closely, it's actually a mesh. That's right, that's the fan inside. The fan's air intake is here, and the air outlet is here. Then this tablet comes in two versions. One with 140 watts of performance release, and the other is said to be 65 watts. The difference is that one has liquid cooling, and the other has a large VC heatsink. Let's put that aside for now, and see what's next. Then, removing the next layer. Oh, there's a special cleaning cloth for the soft light screen and below that should be the new keyboard. Okay, let's open it and take a look. Oh, this design. Did it still appear on the previous keyboard too? It was used on the MatePad tablet before, and we can open it up. Oh, once you open it, you'll see its tablet design. It's only half closed, which seems strange, doesn't it? Why? Because there's actually a stand on the back of the tablet. As you can see, the cooling fan is below, and the stand is on top. This thin stand has a magnetic attachment, so it can be easily attached. Once it's attached, it's like a normal laptop. It protrudes slightly, but the grip area is all metal, and the bottom is made of a leather-like material. It has two hinges. This is the first one, and it can rotate further. The angle here is quite large. You can see it almost lies flat. If you bend it, the screen will pop out, and it can then be placed properly. Below is a 140 watt charging head, the same as the MacBook Pro. And here's a 7A data cable, also C to C. And over here is an extension charger. Let's put everything away and let's get to the important part and take a look at the new MatePad Edge. Let's power it on. The button placement is the same as the normal MatePad. The power button is here. We've already used Harmony OS Next, so we should be able to enter the system now. Once you enter the system, you can see that the device's form factor is indeed, as its name suggests, Edge, a composite form. Its overall design is very similar to the previous MatePad with an added keyboard, with 65 watt fast charging via a port on the keyboard accessory. However, inside this tablet body, which is so thin, it actually houses the same chip as the previous MatePad pad, and it even has active cooling. As I mentioned, the cooling fan is located in the airflow channel underneath, so its performance is incredibly powerful, definitely surpassing all previous mate pads. The peak liquid cooled version can achieve a power consumption of 28 watts, so although I don't know if it's consistently 28 watts, the performance output with the active fan is still quite remarkable. Then, its disassembly method is also very simple, so you can just take it off directly. After taking it off, you can operate it directly as a tablet. When you fold up this stand, it becomes a tablet, and its thickness is actually not particularly thick. You can see the position of the Type-C port, right? It's not much thicker. If I remember correctly, its official thickness is 6.8 millimeters, which feels like a fairly normal tablet, but its performance release and overall design are completely different, and the sound quality this time is also very good. Let me show you the two-in-one form factor. First, as I just mentioned, it attaches magnetically, so the magnet can fix it directly on, and it's the same when you take it off. With a little force, the magnet will detach it. Then on the back, there is a stand at the bottom, but when you fold it up, it's flat. So in computer mode, let's look at its interfaces. First, there is a new Type-C port on the side, and then there is a card slot at the bottom. Speaking of the card slot, it also supports a stylus this time, and this is Huawei's stylus pen. The default pen tip is quite soft and transparent. The tablet also has a magnetic attachment point. We attach it, it will automatically pair. We click connect and it's connected. Now you can write normally. I was just thinking if you've used Microsoft Studio before, there's a mode where you place the pen directly on the keyboard. Because the keyboard surface is concave, placing it won't press on the keyboard or trigger anything. But in this mode, drawing is significantly more stable. The screen doesn't shake at all. And if you use it for gaming, right? The whole interface is more like placing a gamepad here, similar to a large screen. This is a new capability of the Star and Moon keyboard brought by the dual hinge design. Overall, I think the Star and Moon keyboard is very worth mentioning because its design has many ingenious ideas. Firstly, it has a magnetic closure allowing the lid to close properly and wirelessly charge the pen, eliminating the need to attach the pen to the magnetic closure and reducing the risk of losing it when out and about. Secondly, the keyboard's key travel is quite impressive. Can you guess how thin this keyboard is? That's right, 1.8 millimeters. I was astonished when I heard that number. 1.8 millimeters is longer than many keyboards on Ultrabooks. 
Then there's the touchpad, which is also worth mentioning. Let's take a look at the settings. There's a vibration intensity option for the touchpad. You can adjust it to the maximum, indicating it's a pressure sensitive touchpad, which is incredibly important for users accustomed to high-end Windows Ultrabooks, Macs, or Harmony OS computers. This pressure sensitive touchpad is a crucial element for ensuring a superior user experience. That's essentially combining the form factor of a computer and a tablet in one device, while also ensuring system compatibility. This is something many previous two-in-one Windows devices struggle to achieve. So if you're interested in this device, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. We'll be doing a more in-depth review later when I'm going back to home. For now, this is just a hands-on preview. Okay guys, welcome back. Let's continue testing. In terms of hardware, I've given it two form factors and the system's operating logic also has two forms. This thing in terms of application ecosystem completion is going to compete with the Surface Laptop and in terms of hardware design completion is going to compete with the iPad Pro. However, this thing that disguises a Harmony OS computer as a Harmony OS tablet, this machine's system is still Harmony OS 5.1, but it's in a preview stage called SP11 or SP12. And and in this process, there are already some new features. For example, they utilize the 32 gigabytes of RAM and VRAM combined design in the ARM system and have built-in Chrome Studio. Those of you who work with large models should understand what that is. The PC version of Little E also supports parallel tasks and a local knowledge base. Currently, the number of native Harmony OS applications available for download on the Harmony OS computer is over 11,000, but they are confident that by the end of the year, they can reach 14,000 to 15,000. The quality of the third-party applications mentioned above really needs improvement. Take Lark for example. The cloud document editing function in the Harmony OS version is extremely incomplete, lacking even a revision mode. Multi-tables are so bad that the entire interface crashes and becomes unreadable when there are even a few elements. The other day I was on a flight and I only discovered just before takeoff that the Harmony OS version of Tencent Noval didn't even have offline download functionality. The font switching function was only added in a sudden update right before takeoff. It seems that Tencent has become the vanguard in Harmony OS support in this regard. Q, Q, WeChat, and IM, which I frequently use in their Harmony OS versions, are all quite good. Therefore, I think the current native Harmony OS experience is best suited for use as a tablet. For example, I'm currently using my pad mini to read novels. If I were to use it as a productivity tool, I think working class people like me wouldn't be too satisfied. Harmony OS computers can install Windows virtual machines, so why not just buy a cheaper Windows computer? That's actually an affirmation of the interaction method or hardware quality, showcasing software used at their level, such as classic reporting and security scenarios. So the point is that Harmony OS can't be achieved overnight, it requires a gradual approach. But if Huawei could compress its current understanding of computers into a tablet, that would be incredibly ambitious. For example, when I first saw the online promotional poster, I thought it was two devices, a tablet with a built-in folding stand and a computer with a floating stand and keyboard. It wasn't until I got there that I realized it was one device. Its connection method is very ingenious. The keyboard has a magnetic stand that can support it, and the pad edge itself has a footrest that looks very similar to the Microsoft Surface, which is also magnetic. When the two are combined, they magnetically attach to each other, so you get a device that looks like an iPad with a magic keyboard. This design specifically considers commuting scenarios. The keyboard module can be kept separately at the office because there's a lot of typing there, and after you get off work, you can simply flip it open and take only the pad edge itself home without worrying about the stand. When watching videos, another detail is the pen slot at the very back of the MatePad Edge keyboard. My Magic Keyboard, starting with the iPad, features a design where your hands are outside the keyboard, suspended above it. Huawei not only includes this slot, but it can even charge the pen. And it also charges the pen from the top of the tablet's bezel. The keyboard also has another feature. The USB-C port on the side hinge can transmit the charging input to the tablet at 65 watts, allowing you to charge the tablet while simultaneously plugging in OTG devices like USB drives. However, the iPad lacks this feature. The pad edge has a built-in USB-C port that supports 140 watts fast charging. This PC mode truly has two modes. One is the tablet-like operating mode, and the other is a PC mode that can be switched by swiping four fingers across the screen or a trackpad. If you have a virtual machine installed, you can also switch to Windows 11 mode by swiping again. 
so it can't compete with Windows, but it runs perfectly fine. For example, WeChat and QQ on iPad OS have a PC-like layout, but lack the functionality of the PC version. Currently, without jailbreaking, iPad OS cannot run a Windows virtual machine at full speed. Although Apple is trying to incorporate some Mac OS features into iPad OS, it's clearly not as drastic as Huawei's approach. And so far, it seems to be working well. To be honest, I saw a row of Windows virtual machines in the Huawei store looking exactly like the PC version of Chrome, such as the high-tech browser. After all, different UI cater to different user habits. Some people prefer the desktop setup of having a bunch of documents on their computer. Huawei's introduction of this PC mode on a tablet product is essentially catering to the habits of this group of users. Furthermore, you can switch between these two modes on the pad edge. This means that even when you switch back to tablet mode, you don't have to worry about losing files on your desktop because the file manager lists the desktop folder separately. This so-called tablet has a fan inside. They even disassembled the internal cooling system for us on site. The passive cooling consists of a dual V pump liquid cooling film and a heat spreader with two ultra thin turbine fans on either side of the heat spreader's end. When using the pad edge as a tablet, the kickstand is usually closed and the fan doesn't work, relying solely on the liquid cooling film and heat spreader for passive cooling. However, when using the pad edge as a computer, the kickstand is generally open, exposing the heat exchange vents hidden behind the tablet kickstand. The device's maximum performance output is then increased to 28 watts and the system then decides whether to activate the fan based on the current load, such as whether PC applications are running. Many issues remain to be resolved, resulting in a product that offers many features that other tablets cannot do within the form of a tablet. However, Huawei does have a fairly rich selection of PC apps to offer. Of course, if Apple fans insist on things like Press 4.2, Huawei can't compete. But PC-level features like CapCut's ability to handle raw images, Procreate's natural drawing capabilities, and the much-discussed WPSC mean the overall experience offered by the MatePad Edge far surpasses any flagship tablet. In fact, I think if you're not a hardcore computer user, not an engineering student needing specialized software or an academic, but just an average person, especially someone who does a lot of mobile work, the previous choice was either a thin and light Windows laptop or a MacBook Air. This MatePad Edge is a 14.2 inch device, but from a commuting perspective, I think an 11 or 12 inch screen might be better.